Hi, I'm Steve Harper. I'm the CEO of Owner Insight, and I want to welcome you to the Owner Insight Podcast. Today, we're making this episode a special episode for all of our school district leaders out there that are about to have a bond election. First and foremost, we want to let you know our thoughts and prayers are with you because we know what a stressful and crazy time it is for you to be dealing with that, whether the outcome of the election is a positive or maybe not so positive. We want to be able to shine some light on a couple of things that we want you to be thinking about. So as we do this podcast episode, we want to try and provide some level of value to our listeners. And one of the things that has been so amazing is whether it's through our women in construction series, whether it's highlighting some amazing people that are doing really good work out there in the construction space, or we're just trying to find a more effective and and more intentional way to build uh, these projects out and make sure your projects are successful. Owner Insight is committed to being a resource and a value add, whether you're using our software or not. And one of the things that I want to share with you today, specifically to school leaders, is whether or not your bond passes can be a very uh, challenging time. If it doesn't pass, it's like, okay, what do we do with these projects that we know are priority and how do we make them happen with existing funds? And I'm probably going to come back and do another episode just on that topic because we've got some ideas that we can share with you there. But two things I want to leave with you right now that I think are really critical if your bond does not pass. Number one, make sure that all of the documentation and the data that was collected in order to build up that bond to present to your school board and obviously to your constituents is in a way that you have access to. One of the big mistakes that we've seen with school districts is they walk away with a pretty looking report and they've got these graphics that they put on their website to generate information and hopefully interest and support for the projects that they've put forward. And a lot of times when you actually ask, well, where did that data come from? How was it assembled? How was it organized? Where are the uh, data points for the assessments that went into these things to discuss you know, issues with facility shortfalls or additional capacity needs, things of that nature. And we get this crickets look, you know, and this like deer in the headlights look. Well, that's a great question. I got got this pretty looking report. I got this binder or it's on a thumb drive and it's in Excel and it's very complicated and I don't really know what it is. And uh, yeah, (laughs) well, it's not super effective. And one of the things that I would say is that you need to make sure that the data that went into your bond um, approach, the plan, is in a way that you can utilize it right now, even if the bond doesn't pass. That is super critical because you are going to have to go back to the drawing board and you're going to have to figure out how to reprioritize, set a new game plan in motion. And you're going to have to put that in a place that uh, is allowing for additional negotiation to occur internally for Where do we put our interests? Where do we put our money? Where do we put our time and energy to now reprioritize because we have to start the war from here? So that's definitely something I want to make sure that you ensure you walk away with regardless of the outcome. The other thing is, is that I would have you look at not taking the defeat for anything other than maybe the voter appetite right now is swayed more on the negative side because everything right now in the economy is such a challenge. And there are a lot of concerns and a lot of issues relative to that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute uh, for those that actually get it approved because it's just as important for those folks as well. But one of the things that I think is super critical is for you to be able to hold your head high, know that the approach that you guys took to make a case to your constituents that this bond was necessary isn't in vain. What it does require is that you take what you've got and learn from those lessons. And again, that comes down to how easily accessible that data and information is, how willing everybody is to come back to the table. And after a loss, it can be dispiriting. But you know what? Those problems don't go away. The fact that there's not another new bucket of money out there to address some of these things uh, doesn't mean that, you know, we just give up and we wave the white flag. Like with every great battle, you have to begin the war from here. And that means that you're going to have to get those same parties back together and say, okay, guys, 
What do we need to do now to come up with a new game plan? How do we reorganize and prioritize these things? And how are we going to address these needs from a financial perspective, from a schedule perspective? And it, it can be very dispiriting. <laughs> I get that. But the closer you are to how that information was developed and, and presented, it's super critical to carry and draft off that momentum so that we can recreate what needs to happen next. So that's my message for districts that have uh, less than a positive outcome at the, uh, at the ballot box. So don't lose the information. Make sure you have that information where you can get to it. You've got full visibility into it. And then don't wait two weeks, two months. Um, start having those meetings now. Start talking about how we start the battle from here. And uh, certainly if you're open to ideas and suggestions on how to do that, reach out to us because I would love to have a conversation with you just to see if we could add any value there. So switching gears for a second, like I said, I will come back and actually maybe do another episode uh, very soon on how that data could be organized and some ideas on ways that you can leverage it point forward uh, to start that battle. But switching gears now, if your district has successfully passed a bond, I want to say congratulations. Uh, you know, you were sweating it before and now you're really sweating it because it's like the clock is ticking. But there are some critical things that I want you as a district leadership team to know. The fact that the bond has been passed and has been approved and your voters are now expecting action to start taking place means that you have a tremendous amount of pressure and a pressure to do it right, right? They've approved this because they believe in what you put forward. They believe in the commitment and the approach that you're taking and the responsibility and the, and the risk is higher than it ever has been. And I want to talk about the economy and what that does and what the challenges are for school districts right now in that specific realm. Let's look at the economy for what it is, right? We all hear this on the news. We have supply chain shortfalls and we have labor shortages. And in my humble opinion, what that is going to do for school districts is put an increased amount of pressure to make sure that you have tight level controls into how these projects evolve, which means understanding costs, what they are, what they could be, ensuring that you've got proper accountability built into the contracts with your GC, with your architect to account for these potential fluctuations and have a clear understanding from your perspective what happens if what we said we were going to do has to change or adjust because outside economic influences force our hand. So the challenge that I think that a lot of districts are going to have is once they get the approval from the voter and it's like poof, that starter gun goes, everybody's off to the races and it's like, move, 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 move. We said we'd get this done in two years or, you know, we got to open a school next August or whatever the case might be. Every single project that you have from how small it is all the way to brand new schools, brand new stadiums and athletic facilities means that you have to take tight control over these projects. And what I would suggest is that with labor shortages and supply chain shortfalls, the odds are already stacked against you. And what I mean by that is that there are going to be a lot of shortcuts taken. And if you as district leadership do not have strong visibility and you hold or have tools and the ability to hold those stakeholders on your projects accountable and you don't walk away with a strongly understood, clear outline and approach of what went into your projects, when some of these shortcuts start to rear their ugly head and they will, Two years from now, five years from now, if you don't have that documentation, you don't have a good memorialization of what went into those projects, you don't have a clear baseline of communication and you're struggling because everything else was sort of managed by everybody else, but not you, you're setting that district, your district up for failure. And I mean this in the strongest possible terms that you and your district and your leadership team, you are the owner. I know that the pressure is on to add additional capacity to existing campuses 
or to do those maintenance upgrades and to do those renovations and build those new facilities. Every project is critical and important because you have laid your reputation on the line to make sure that your taxpayers know that you are going to be good stewards of those dollars. And yet the odds are stacked against you that some of the partners that you probably are bringing on to these projects may have people that will take shortcuts, may be putting inferior product into your builds, and may not have the same vested interest in your community that you do. And so you want to ensure that you have everything aligned in a way, documented in a way that is going to protect you. Now, this is not a commercial for what we do, but that's the genesis of what Owner Insight was built for. The name itself, Owner, it's an owner process. It's a repeatable, predictable process that ensures that projects are done correctly and that our owners have straight line visibility. They can hold their project teams accountable and they walk away with a good memorialization of their software or excuse me, of their project utilizing a software that was built for them. Here's what I would say. Most of the districts that we've had the opportunity to have conversations with or that we've now started working with, when they look back at projects that were previously done, they're still chasing documentation. They never had clear visibility into how the projects were progressing. Some of the changes that ended up coming because of supply chain costs, increases to all sorts of different areas that impact the budget, those things came as complete surprises because nobody had a unified hymnal from which they were all singing. But the biggest problem that I see with school districts is in the rush to get the work done. Those shortcuts were happening and those issues were occurring. And because they did not have the visibility, small problems become big problems. And sometimes those problems are even bigger problems down the road that you just don't know yet highly recommend that your team take a step back and look at two things. Who owns the documentation? How is it going to be presented to you as a school district leadership team? How are you going to manage these projects effectively if you don't have that data in your own approach, your own platform? And you've got to know and this is a hard thing for me to say because I think most everybody goes into a project with the best intentions. They want to do the best job, but they get behind. Weather impacts projects, supply chain challenges create more added stress, timelines get bumped, costs increase, and before you know it, projects can be out of control very quickly. And before you know it, a project is off the rails. And sometimes it feels like you just started and you're already in a ditch. So as you approach what you need to deal with with the bond, ask yourself, do we have the right approach to documenting, tracking, and managing the information in a way that is defensible and supportable by the district? Because again, we're looking for and trying to protect your long-term interest. Do we have the types of partners on this project that are going to honor their commitments, they're going to do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it. And they are in, they are on the same page about delivering this project at the budget we've agreed to. And hopefully with construction efficiencies, maybe a little bit under. If you can't honestly address that, then I highly recommend we have a conversation because these are the gotchas. These are the things that come back to bite so many school districts. Small districts, medium-sized districts, and even the large districts who have teams that may be more additional manpower and capability still make these mistakes day in and day out. The worst thing that you can do is to have gotten the voter trust at the, at, at the polls and gotten the approval to move forward and then not deliver on what you say you'll deliver. And that is a major risk Careers are made and careers are broken when these things uh, either go right or they go wrong. And unfortunately, based on our circumstances and what we've seen within the school district industry, 
everybody right now, my friends, is licking their chops because they want your business. They want to be able to work on the next project. They want the design work. They want the, you know, the construction contract. They want to do the consulting. They want to do it all. But the only people that really have the true vested interest is you and your leadership team to deliver that product, the best possible product to your stakeholders. And so I would just like to throw out there that if you don't feel like you have complete control and you're trying to figure out, oh my God, we passed the bond. Now what do we do? Um, recognize that you need somebody there at the table with you that can help guide and direct to ensure that you've got the process that is followed by everyone. And it's documented, tracked, and managed in a way that's going to preserve and protect the district's interest long term. And if you do it on one project and you've got many things that are on that bond, it becomes even more valuable for you to have that predictable, repeatable approach for all your projects. It makes things go smoother. It makes things uh, go in a way that allows everybody to understand that there is a consistent rules to the game that the district expects from the GCs to the subs, to the architect, to the engineer, to the consultants. Everybody knows that this is a district that they need to deliver and bring their A game because that is the bottom line expectation. So I, I just want to leave you with those thoughts because it is very challenging times today and you don't want to do anything that could impugn the credibility that you have built up and that you have uh, gained with your taxpayers to deliver anything less than an outstanding in the game project, whether it's renovation, additions, new construction, or delivering 100% on what you said you do on this bond program. We would love to have a conversation with you. We'd love to just, you know, share some ideas and thoughts with zero, zero pressure for you to actually buy owner insight or leverage it. I'd love for you to do it, but it's not necessary for you to have to be a customer because we will showcase some of the major problems that we've seen in projects, give you some ideas to ensure that you don't make those same mistakes. Because my friends, when they do happen, we're not talking a couple of thousands of dollars of problems. We're talking tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars, in some cases, millions of dollars that you could be putting at risk for your district to not do it right. So for those school district leaders, my friends that didn't pass, We'll be back again with a very um, powerful episode on, again, how to put that data that you've got collected, that you helped uh, organize and assemble to present your case to your taxpayers. And even though it didn't go your way at the ballot box, how to not throw the baby out with the bathwater. So we've got some ideas there. We'll bring that back out in a new episode. And for those of you that have passed the bond, congratulations. The really hard work begins now. And uh, we're happy to share some thoughts and ideas that we think can benefit you. Hope you'll reach out to us and uh, start a conversation. All right. Uh, we appreciate you tuning into another episode of Owner Insights, uh, our Owner Insight podcast. We really, really appreciate this time and uh, the opportunity to have this dialogue and conversation with you. I want to personally say thank you to all the school districts out there for what you do, both for your students and your staff, um, to provide the very best learning environments that you can. I understand the pressures, the challenges that you have, a lot of shoestring budgets out there. We wanna help you make sure those budgets go correctly, um, You know, those projects go executed well, and that we keep more dollars in the classroom. That's my commitment. As an entrepreneur and, a, and someone who is very committed to the work that you do, I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you for all the hard work and everything that you do to to make your school communities the very best that they can be. And uh, if we can be a partner or support you in any way, we certainly want to know about that and uh, see what we can do to help. So, and it, you know, appreciate you tuning in and we will be back again very soon with that other episode for our friends that didn't pass the bond on how they can leverage that data uh, to their benefit and make it operationally effective point forward. Until then, you guys take care.